I'll show you some use cases for Affinity Photo's median blur filter, which uses median filtering to detect and remove outlier pixels. Within the context of image signal processing, this can make it useful for reducing noise, scratches, and other artifacts. There is also an implementation of median filtering called Dust and Scratches, which has a couple of extra options, and we will look at that too. For my first example, I have a 3D render. I've composited various render passes together, and the base render has been through a denoising pass. But if I zoom in, you can still see various fireflies. These are anomalous, bright pixels that can be more prevalent depending on the interaction between light and materials used for the render. Many 3D renderers nowadays have some form of denoising, but they are not always 100% effective at removing fireflies. We can attempt to clean this render up further by using median blur. First of all, I need to make sure I have my background layer selected, which is the base render. Then I'll quickly show you the destructive filter, which is available by going to Filters, Blur, Median Blur. But I'm actually going to apply this non-destructively by going to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, Blur, Median Blur. This places a Median Blur layer inside the background layer and brings up the dialog down here. I'll check Preserve Alpha and start to bring the radius value up until I see the fireflies disappear. A radius value of 2 is enough to remove the majority of fireflies from this image. If I hide the median blur filter, this will disable its effect, and I can zoom right into one of the fireflies. You will notice that they are only single pixels. There is no contamination of surrounding pixels, which is why a small radius works remarkably well for removing these outlier pixels. Now, you should always examine the effect at a 100% zoom level for the most accurate preview. You can use Command-1 on Mac, Control-1 on Windows to quickly zoom to this one-to-one -one reproduction of the document. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, Affinity Photo also has a Dust and Scratches filter. This uses the same median operator as the median blur filter, but presents extra options. Here is a good example. I have this old scanned photograph which needs cleaning up and retouching. Rather than manually retouch every single scratch and mark on the image, I can use the Dust and Scratches filter to perform a fair amount of the work for me. I'll add the non-destructive version of Dust and Scratches by going to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, Noise, Dust and Scratches. I'll zoom in, check Preserve Alpha, then increase the radius, until the majority of marks begin to disappear. I don't want to push the radius too far to the point where meaningful detail is being completely lost, so I'll bring it back to around 16 or 17 pixels. Then I'll adjust the tolerance slider and bring it up until more of the fine detail starts to return. The goal is to find a balance that removes the majority of image artifacts but also maintains the detail and shape of the image content. So I think I will settle for a tolerance of around 4%. Now I'll tackle the subject's face. This is why I have used the live layer implementation of the filter, as it can easily be masked. I've already got the dust and scratches layer active on the layers panel. So now I'll choose the paintbrush tool, decrease the hardness to 0%, on the context toolbar here. Then I'll increase the brush width and ensure the active color is set to black here. Then I'll paint away from the face and the ear. Once I have finished, I can switch to a one-to-one -one view by using Command-1 on Mac, Control-1 on Windows. At this zoom level, I might realize that too much of the detail is being removed. So I can single-click on the Dust and Scratches icon here to bring the dialog back up. Then I can marginally increase the tolerance, perhaps to around 6 or 7%. So with this result, I would still need to manually retouch the face area. But if I just hide 
the filter layer, you can see that this has saved me a huge amount of time, as I no longer have to retouch all of these areas around the rest of the image. You'll notice there is a channel tolerance checkbox down here. This switches the method used for filtering outlier pixels from a Euclidean cube RGB model to a per channel model. In practice, the differences are typically very minor, but you may have some edge case scenarios where median filtering per channel would produce better or smoother results. Median filtering can also be used to render an artistic, painterly effect. With this image, I'll add a live median blur filter. By default, this has child layered into the color balance adjustment where it won't have any effect, so I will click drag it out and release the mouse button at the top of the layer stack to place it as a parent layer. Then I'll check Preserve Alpha and drag the radius value up until I start to see edge detail being filtered away. I'll zoom in to show the effect in more detail. Using higher radius values will create a more abstract impression of the image detail whereas using more moderate values will retain more local detail. Don't forget to check the result at a 100% zoom level as well. I might settle on a radius of 8 pixels for this image and close the dialog. But because I've added median blur as a live filter layer, I am always at liberty to hide it and restore the image to how it was previously. Then I can show the layer again to see this painterly effect. And there we go. That was a look at the median blur and dust and scratches filters. I hope you found this video useful and thank you for watching.